Hey, everybody. <laughs> I'm Neil Brennan. I have, a, I have a Netflix special called Blocks where I talk about things that I think are wrong with me and things that make me feel lonely. You've probably seen it. You've probably heard me talk about it on here. And then Jimmy Carr had the idea. Have your friends come on and talk about their blocks. Today's guest is a guy I barely know but admire a great deal comedy spirit-wise because I've never seen your stand-up. Okay. Like, I'm sorry to say that. No, no, it's, yeah. it's great. You should see it one day. It's, I would, you'll, where you'll have, can you'll I have see a good it? time. Oh, all over. <laughs> <laughs> what town are you going to be in? No, no, I'm no, actually I'm filming saying, a special I'm, in October. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm filming a special in October. Sal Vilcano, everybody. Yes. Sal Vilcano is here, everybody. We don't Thank have you. an applause thing, but. That would be cool. Yeah, it would be cool. In time. Do you know I went to go see your um, three mics? I, that touches me more than most things. Oh. When people come to the show. Yeah. It, it, and I loved it. Thank you. I, well, you you messaged me or you got the message. Yeah, me. yeah, you yeah. Messaged me. I meant to come to your late last one. I was actually going to come with Burn, but something came up and I couldn't make it. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I think he told me that. My too. point being is that long time admirer. Well. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, based on the list he's given me. I'm crazy. This guy's come to the right place. He's on the right <laughs> podcast. Well, what's your short biography before I start? Like, give me the first. What's your Wikipedia page say? Like, where'd you grow up? Parents, family. Sure, et cetera. sure. Born and raised in Staten Island, New York. Yep. Gets a bad rap. Parents divorced when I was four. I have three sisters. Went to Catholic school my whole life. Catholic college, even scholarship to college. Really? Lost for, it midway. For what? Academics. And but how'd I, you lose it? I was supposed to keep a cumulative 3.0 average. And Cume. after my, Cume, yeah. After my second. What school? St. John's. After my second what, man, year. Man, Catholic college. I don't think I could have done it. It wasn't because of Catholicism. No, I got I, it. I don't, I'm not oh, even, I'm not even religious. It. Right. Yeah. But, um, but just going, did it feel, I guess you never went to another one. Or maybe you did go to another one that wasn't. No, it didn't, feel like, it didn't feel like a Catholic college. Okay. Catholic college. Yeah. Whereas uh, grammar school and high school did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, after my second year, I my cume fell to a two point nine eight, so two hundredths of a point, and they took the scholarship away. And I went in there and I said, "Listen, I said, can you can I have a grace period? Can I have a makeup test? Can I have anything? I, I promise I'll get it back up, but I can't go here anymore if I lose the scholarship." Yeah, and I'll never forget the woman, and I guess I guess it was like the bursar or wherever it was. She was so flippant; she didn't care at all. Didn't even like she was looking past like me. DMV yeah exactly like that or airline uh, yes and i'm like rental literally. car plate now i i rental love car, the juice i'm yeah, getting from yes you. yes the approval i love yeah, rental right car, I though i will say rental, yeah. not as much okay and not and these days the dmv i haven't been to in a really long time yeah. but but air airport airport is the one all the way all the way so she couldn't be bothered i had like i would like genuinely trying to speak to this woman she said uh Oh, if you'd like a transfer form, I can get that for you. Literally. And Did she look like, at you when she said it? I don't remember. Or don't she was like, I remember well, she was like, I was like, I, I have to leave here. Is there any way? And she's like, no, no. And then she's like, do you need paperwork to, to transfer? And I was just like, anyway, I finished college. I, I, I finished there. I worked and paid it. What, what took you under? What was the camera? Quantitative like? analysis. Is that Q financial? QA as they called it. Yeah, I was majoring in finance. Fucking Jesus that, I don't truly dude, I went to they said pick a major I was 17 right I said what how do you like what can make me money <laughs> finance is like probably the definition of yeah that. that's yep. how I chose it that's just <laughs> it, no better or worse than anybody else like yeah it's it's, it's, it's absurd. all dumb it's absurd yeah, yeah. I majored in film which mm. I, I it I was okay right. so you write you I was the course. right but like I dropped out after a year Okay. Because I knew I was like this. I'm gonna have to just write hands something. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just gonna have to write something. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you did you work in finance ever? So I, I got out of school. I I went on one job interview. I took the job at Prudential Securities, <laughs> <laughs> and I I worked downtown at One New York Plaza. It's the first building off of the ferry. Were you in 911 with Steve Ranzizi? I was there, not with Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was with Steve for a while. Yeah. But no, no, no. I love Steve. Um, yeah, no, course. no. I I. Uh, I was actually my ferry boat was docking when the second one hit. So I was listening to Howard Stern. They started talking about the first one. And so people started walking to the front of the boat. And so I went and I right. saw it and you th I thought it was like a Cessna yeah. or something like that. And it's oh, a terrible tragedy. I bet you a few people died. Yeah. 
or maybe more, I, I wasn't registering. And then as I'm watching it and uh, literally the, I don't know if you've ever taken the ferry, but like the, the, uh, whatever this is called, like the bridge yeah. to, to connect to the yeah. boat was coming down. It was like 908 or something like that. And we, I, we heard, it was like, Arr! we turned saw it and watched it. And then everybody was just completely frozen no one knew what to do people were screaming crying falling on the floor it was like if this you is don't it. know so, so anyway York, thanks for tuning like in everybody 700 yards away yeah yeah i felt we felt heat and then the <sighs> drawbridge that was coming down went back up and my boat went back to Staten Island. <laughs> and we were the it's only like fucking boat. The Grandpa Simpson. The Grandpa <laughs> Simpson meme, but with the with the fucking Br the oh okay and then i went we were the last one to get back everyone else was committed they stopped service and then everybody else the bridges closed and the ferry closed and everyone else that was there was either stuck or had to walk over the bridge and got all fucked up with the soot and all that stuff and you know i, I well you must have been, it must ever. have been like it you're was, pulling away and smoke is coming yeah like a movie yes that's insane. No, that, no I don't know well, anyone. No, no, that, no. So the smoke, yes, the heat and the smoke. Well, I guess it didn't fall. But, yet, no, right. But I that I was back on the other side with my dad watching it, at right at the shoreline. He came to my house immediately, picked me up. We didn't know what to do or where to go, and so we just wanted to be to know. What it was is going a tough on. thing to know what. Like, what do we do? We get drinks. What do we? Right, <laughs> right. <It was> like, <laughs> we didn't know if we were gonna go. Uh, yeah. go for lunch. Or no, it was just uh, and and even when they fell, we couldn't process it. Yeah, you're like, you what? had I had no idea what was. My mind didn't go to. It's like it's still we, the I saw I happened to be in Paris, meeting with people from Al Qaeda. No, I was having to be in Paris, <laughs> and I remember seeing it on tele. It's the now that you don't mention it, it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what the fuck is it's. It was impossible. The The thought that I had in that moment wasn't like, oh my God. It was a bit of, oh my God, these iconic, I, I can't believe there's no one. Mm -hmm. But it was, we thought that like, for some reason, maybe like it was cleared out and nobody was in the area. Like, it, yeah, no, it's weird. It what was your so brain jumbled. Does. Like, well, maybe this is intentional. Well, the first one hit, they evacuated. Yeah. So we're like, all right, so everything's out. And yeah. we're like, oh my God, they're falling. But we didn't realize that yeah you go well they must have they must have cleared it out before they fell you know yeah. what i mean like you just your brain does organize shit yeah like well there's no way they wouldn't two thousand people i'll tell you what didn't happen two thousand people didn't just die but meanwhile <laughs> they absolutely did right die. it goes like three plus thousand right well, two thousand oh well all right it's still a lot i don't want to add a thousand no it's still i think we were I, right to on the car right over here i was like i know we're gonna lead off at nine eleven. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta start it, it's not a podcast um all right and then when did you so how long do you work in how long were you like four person? years okay i was doing comedy while i worked there okay and then after four years they they were laying off people a lot and so i volunteered because they gave a severance i didn't want to be there i want to save someone yeah. else's job so i left and i started to bartend so that I could work on comedy right. and, and I'd have a flexible schedule. And I, I ended up, and I had to, my backup was that I would open a bar, which I did as well. So right. I was a bartender for about nine, 10 years, uh, all while doing comedy, saving money, learning that business. And then in 2011 or 10, 2010, I, or 11, I, I bought, I went in, I left the bar I was at and I went with two partners and I bought a bar and dude, like, Three months later, I got the television show. Yeah, and I just sank my savings. In practical jokes, just FYI. In, in practical jokes, I sank my savings into the bar, and that was my. I was a full time job with a full time job that I had to go full at both of them for the first two seasons of jo Jokers. Two full seasons, I worked in the bar every day. I sorry, I worked. I filmed every day, and I was and you working, were worse at the show. Working the bar every night. Oh my god, the dude. guys asked you to. You got to step it up. <laughs> yeah, there was a, no, there was there was there was most nights I was on full. You were like an NBA player in the fifties, like, where you had to work at a car dealership. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, dude. I there was most of the days I had was on four you hours. Couldn't sleep. not four do hours. it. You couldn't just couldn't say, not do what work in the bar. Couldn't leave the bar. Yeah, you couldn't no, like no, figure no, out no, somebody your own business. You got to be there, hands on, or that thing. But it was fail. you and two other people. Yeah, but I was the like. I was the most you were the real alcohol diligent okay. one and I was the one that had eight years of experience right. nine years of experience they didn't 
Got it. So it was it was necessary for me to be there, and I just took a deep breath and said, "Let's do it." I'm going to go hard on both. Uh, after two years, I almost had a freaking nervous breakdown. Of course, but after, it's bad enough to do a TV show. It's bad enough, dude. Four hours sleep. I would I would I would be filming at like eight nine a.m. I'd finish at like four five o'clock. I'd get to the bar about seven o'clock. I'd be there till about four a.m. Yeah, and that was three nights a week at least sometimes four for two years that i was there is and the bar no doing good? The bar i left in the third season i said i'm taking a leap of faith and i like relinquished and i left it and is it still open no it failed about a year later fantastic yeah well yeah yeah i mean did you get your money out of it <laughs> no i didn't no i need specific dollar i'm kidding yeah <laughs> um okay that's fascinating i can't believe you did that that's insane i can't either now that i think about um it. that and 9 11 are the two weirdest things about i can't believe i did both of them um <laughs> let's get into some blocks ready yes sir ocd yeah talk to me i don't know if you see me fidgeting this entire time I you can't. haven't been mad you he warned me before we started that he was going to be fidgeting the whole time I'm just he can't always get comfortable. fixing everything but i don't have ocd like i gotta tap nine times and like it's just different like my biggest one is and this has been since i'm young and i i'm trying to get hypnotized for it but i pointy objects i can't have them facing me hmm. and that goes from like if we were sitting at dinner and like you're across from me and your fork and is standing mm -hmm. up to me or you had a drink of water with a straw and that straw was facing toward me or like when i went on my first interview at the, for prudential and i yep. took the job i sat down and the guy had the thing with two fountain pens like a name plate <laughs> with two fountain, and they were both pointing at me and he had a stack up and the whole it was like an hour interview i was curling my feet into balls and just trying not to like freak out because you get i get this tight tension i don't i don't know if it's about control or whatever but uh my sister hit me in the you see i have a scar here i think right here in this eye yeah there a scar right there my sister hit me in the face with a malibu ken okay. when i was in like fourth grade i I, got, I trace it back to that maybe i fell hit my head it yeah was a thing so maybe that's what it. part of Malibu Ken did his he have hand? I still see a pointy, and it was the Malibu Ken with synthetic hair and like floral board shorts. I'll Ugh. never forget that fucker. Unforgivable, it's straight because he doesn't bend. His arm doesn't bend. Well, he's from Malibu. Yeah, um, <laughs> and you think that's when it? I don't know. I, that was well, the most do any thing. of them make sense? Because like no, but like can you go and from that day forward, I needed no, but when I am having a particularly hypersensitive day everything bothers me like with if you're points. hypersensitive emotionally no like I can't or you're hypersensitive it. to point OCD -ish. pointing at yeah, yeah like everything would be bothering me like i used to live in a, a studio apartment right little basement studio apartment and i remember nights where i would go to bed i slept on, i slept on a couch for nine years in this basement apartment because i thought i got this apartment i left my house after fighting with my parents i was like in my young 20s i got this apartment working at prudential yeah Okay. And I got this apartment and it, I didn't know how long I was staying there. And my dad, as a gesture, got me like a couch set like this. And it took up a lot of the room. And if I was <laughs> going to put a mattress in, I, and I was like, I'm not staying here long. And the couch is brand new and it's comfortable. Yeah. So I slept on it. I lived there for nine years. So I would be on sleep on the couch. And this is basically the size of the apartment. And sometimes it'd be so hypersensitive that I'd have to get up and turn every single thing that was pointing at me. <laughs> It hasn't been that bad in a long time. But to this day, see this? This is my dream coffee table. If I'm at no, home, yeah, last circled. night, if I'm at home. You're, you're like a baby. You're like a newborn baby. A toddler that they're afraid. You need rubberized. You need soft, round edges. Do you know that if you covered a point, or if this was pointy right here, what I do at home, I put my phone on it like that literally melts away nothing i'm like i'm protected i don't think it's gonna it's not that i think this is going to do anything to me it's just that i don't like it and i can't not focus on it are there days where you just don't notice yes. then you leave a room and you're like oh that thing was fucking pointing at me the whole yeah, time yeah yeah there's days i don't do it and there's days i do it all day long and, and you, you don't know the difference between those two days meaning is it lack of sleep stress i think it has to do with like when i'm revved up with my adhd and stuff um, well, look, we didn't get to the, don't blow it. Okay. <laughs> we didn't get to that yet. People don't know that you got ADHD. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so they don't know a lot of things. Uh, yeah. I, so I just, you know, or sometimes I'll, 
especially when that's happening, light, I'm sensitive to light as well. Yeah, I watch when, when I'm home half the time, if, if I feel this way, I watch television and sunglasses in the house because I need the, like the screen just is too bright. Like my eyes are so sensitive. Not just impractical jokers. I don't watch my show. <laughs> if you did, you, we should, I watch Chappelle show with sunglasses. I watch when my Netflix special comes on, I throw a pair of shades on. Do you like, really? No. Oh. Um, <laughs> I open up the bay window and make sure people can see me watch a little Bluetooth sunglasses. speaker. Yeah. Well, what? And I keep going, what have we here? Um, <laughs> Is this me? Oh, if you're at a place like a job interview. Yeah. You just got to eat it like on a plane if somebody or a subway if somebody opens like a newspaper and the edge is like hanging like right here i literally i actually begin to sweat and i get a tension headache my neck gets tense like i just have to and i it's nothing else in the ocd realm is like that that's i mean that's a front runner by a mile pointy shit yeah great other things like i'm very particular i have things that like i don't like like and i keep a running list like Traffic, sweat, the common cold, strong wind, bugs, cats, pointy objects, filth, things like that. That sounded memorized. It is because sung. it's it's been my it's been do it my, again. Traffic, sweat, the common cold, pointy objects, bugs, cats. Uh, no, sorry. Traffic, sweat, the common cold. Uh, what did I just say? Traffic, sweat, the common cold. Po pointy objects came later, but why am I forgetting my own list? Traffic, sweat, common cold, bugs. Cats, pointy objects, general filth. Did I leave anything out? No. Oh, then it was bugs. Yeah. Traffic. That's the bugs. Sal's national national bugs, anthem. Cats, pointy objects, and filth. Yeah, all those things. When I you have, if you win an Olympic rich. medal, you'll stand on That's the podium it. and they'll they'll play that. Yeah. <laughs> they all bother me terribly. Common cold on vacation would trump traffic for me, but I might eliminate traffic before poverty. Be if I'm being honest. What do you mean traffic? I can't take like. It. So I, what I, happens? I just, I'm like, I can't sit here like this. <laughs> this is insane. And there's, there's nothing I can do about this. Like, and, and it's even worse, like at the inopportune time, like if you're coming home from JFK at midnight and all of a sudden on the BQE, they're doing construction. And I thought I was going to be home in 45 minutes. And now it's, it's 2 a.m. And I'm sitting well, listening the, to I a mean, jackhammer. Anybody for that one, right? Of course, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to sweat. I don't got a song about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but you I'm never saying, know. no, it's the night, who knows? Yeah, no, a night traffic where you're like, what the fuck is like night after 8 p.m. There shouldn't if someone should better be have died. Yeah, someone should die. Yeah, I I, I, uh, I feel like I'm losing life. You know, I'm losing yes. time. You think you're My dead. Time is worth it. I'm deader than you are. Actual corpse. Right. <laughs> I'm going through more right now. <laughs> what than, I'm than the yeah. accident. That caused this. <laughs> uh, bugs, traffic, bugs, traffic, sweat. Traffic, so, yeah, traffic, sweat, okay. the common cold. And what do you do? What's the craziest thing you've ever done in a traffic jam? I've hopped over the divider and went the other way. Is that something? All right, that's not bad. Even on a divider highway. Divider like grass ravine? No, cement on a, on, like a, on, a, on a road like a boulevard. But I've also, I also went over like, uh, like grass on a highway to the other side of the highway. Yeah, that's what I'm like looking Like the for. Jersey Park. Like yeah, that's exactly Garden what State I'm thinking Parkway. Of. Like that, because there's a forest through the middle yeah, of some of Yeah, I went that. through that far. Well, no, I mean, there's a path like, where the cops yeah. go and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I did it because I'd rather drive double the distance with no traffic and take the same amount of time to get there. I think I, I kind think of agree, agree with you on that. that, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you feel like a real, to quote Goodfellas, you feel like a real schnook sitting in traffic schnook is in good that's fellas? the last a real that's like the last thing he says i'm a schnook oh, when he's in yeah. witness protection yeah. yeah thank you for abbreviating it this episode is sponsored by blue chew let's talk about sex guys shouldn't you always be at your best listen up bluechew.com blue chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as viagra cialis and levitra but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost, you can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity, ding, arises. Neil, you're, from what I understand, the uh, paradigm of male health and masculinity. You wouldn't, Neil, you wouldn't dare. Yeah, ding dong, what do I, what, what's the downside? I'll try it. And, and also you chew it, so you don't have to like, you can just, 
you can uh, turd Ferguson in it. You know what I mean? Oh. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code NEAL at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. Uh, promo code NEAL, NEAL, to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. We thank Blue Chew uh, for sponsoring the podcast. Woo! Um, okay, traffic, common cold, traffic bugs. Traffic sweat, common cold. I'm sorry, cold. traffic sweat, tr- sweat. Terrible. Ruins, it ruins my day just as much as traffic. I don't mean if like you sweating. you sweat. Yeah. It ruins your day. Yeah. Not if I'm like working out or something like that. Right. That I get you want to sweat, but at any other time. And I've been a sweater my whole life. What? So you, what do you do in New York in the summer? I walk around with, a, with an attitude <laughs> or I don't go out or I dip in and out of places or I just complain. My guess is even when you set up stuff for the show, you guys are not in ventilated rooms no half the time we're in the most ter- we're in you're ridic- always i mean i would think you're of always sweating yeah you're not yeah i had to have a whole thing where i told them we can't do this it affects our performance it, <laughs> it affects my mind it's also state. affecting your bar my bar yeah it's a miracle how long it's been on anyway but the fact that you owned a bar yeah. and you can't sweat <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh i would i would i would i would bartend some nights with t- one just me with 200 250 people i was like tom cruise and cocktail and sw- butt sweat i would sweat my ass off yeah but but uh like if i'm sweating like if i'm like at a like in a suit or i'm on camera or on stage i'm i'll tell you right now i'm literally chose not to, i just moved the, my date of my special from august to october strictly based on sweat they were like, no, 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 it doesn't matter. We'll we'll ship in air conditioners. We'll get it cool. I was like, it has to be like, 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 it has to be like Letterman Studio. Yeah. Cool. Like cold, like that. And so I, I pushed it to October strictly based on sweat. Because I was like, if I put that in, per- if I film a special and I'm sweating in it, I'll never, I'll hate it. I'll it hate it. Okay. I'm still going to sweat. Not Right. That's what I'm saying. I know, like, but not as much. What it, Your back's going to sweat. You know what I mean? Or whatever. My back, visual. If, if it comes across visual, I don't like that either. And that that sets off my OCD because then I'm like constantly like trying to wipe the sweat away or, or like make myself less sweaty. You know what I mean? Like all these things. Play Do you into, think I might be a control thing? I don't know. Sweat makes people lose confidence in you or something? Like what about? No, it's just disgusting. It's just gross. I don't want to be sopping wet with sweat. It, it fucks up my whole shit. Like even my hair gets completely fucked up. I can't have, if I sweat, my hair just blows up. And if I'm not wearing a hat, I'm doomed. I wear a hat the last 10 years nearly exclusively for two reasons. One, so I go hide from people and yeah. walk like, you know, yeah. and two, because if I don't have it on and I'm sweating, my hair is just, it's, it's just insane. How, how about this I'm, for irony? The hat makes me sweat. Um, Unpack that. Have you gotten the flap ones? Which ones? You can get a hat with flaps, not the air conditioner. I mean, you could do the one with the fan, the pith helmet. They got okay. fans in a hat. <laughs> I didn't know that. What flaps? You're not using. You're not your talking Amazon about safari correctly. flaps, are you? Like yeah. do rag kind of. No, thing but not do. They're not do. Do rags like stringy. You talking about like? Fl- I think you should I leave have hats. Yeah, I have hats that because if I ever have to shoot something outside, I get fried up immediately so right. i got hats i got three different you come to la i got three different safaris with like almost looks like net like mosquito netting but you could put that on when you're directing uh-huh. it, it's 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 allowed but i yeah. can't wear that safari no. hat when but i go grocery shopping it. you'd be surprised i would all right hold on we're not even near done with just ocd traffic Sweat, sweat, common cold, common cold. There are times where I think that I would put common cold in the one position. That's why I make the caveat that a common cold on vacation, which I've endured, might even be traffic. Is it just you having one or anyone having one? Well, it's me, but 
I have very weak immune system and a weak constitution. <laughs> so I throw up easily, but I, but I have a weak immune system. So it annoys me because even my, my lady, she doesn't believe me after like all this time, but like, I know when I'm getting sick. I know immediately when it's happening. I call it all the time. Like Babe Ruth calling the shot. I go, someone sneezes near me five minutes later. I go, oh, I'm going to be sick later. I swear and to God, you're right. I have hundred percent accuracy. And she tells me no. And then the next morning I wake up, I go, guess what? I'm sick. When are you going to stop believing me? You know, and I've, he, I've met your opposite is a guy named Joe Opio writes for the daily show. Okay. From, I want to say Kenya or Nigeria. He's never, he doesn't believe in colds and has never gotten one. He's 35. Mind over matter? I don't. That's an impossibility. Joe Opio is, I want to make a documentary about him, but he won't let me. He's the most interesting person I've ever met in my life. He like the Dosecki's guy? He's more interesting because he's fucking weird. He's a comedy writer. He's he ran had a, a day. He had his own daily show in, I, I don't think it's Nigeria, but it might be Nigeria. He's never gotten a cold. He wakes up. He, lo he loves sleeping, but he wakes up in the middle of the night to just appreciate how great it is to be able to go back to sleep. And then he goes back to sleep. I get that, but I can't do that because if I wake up, I might have a little bit of trouble falling back and that would be doomsday. Yeah. Well, Six pillows to sleep. I told you that. No. Yeah. I mean, I don't even, we haven't, that's okay, later. Right, yeah. Sorry. Um, don't, yeah. I, I, um, I keep doing you're it. stepping on your own punch. I am. So yeah, he's never gotten a cold. Doesn't believe in it. And also loves cruise ships. And goes on cruise ships. <laughs> when he hasn't gotten a cold. Never gotten a cold. Goes on cruise ships. Looks so much like the I'm the captain now guy from Captain <laughs> Phillips that he's a frequent like carnival cruise guy, like the highest level of carnival cruise taker. So he gets to eat dinner with the captain. <laughs> and then they they he they bring the people at the table to the deck and they he does I'm the captain now. No. He it's his name is Joseph Obia. He's He's a, also the, how he got this job at the daily show. He was at the cellar. I met him. Trevor came this is before Trevor, Trevor been announced, but didn't have the show. Trevor comes. I assume they know each other, Trevor and Joe. Um, cause he had like, a, I just assume they knew each other. So then me and Tre we're all, he's like sitting at a table with me and Trevor. And so then me and Trevor are going to somewhere else. I'm like, Joe, let's go. He comes. He writes on the show for six years. Trevor tells me a year ago, I didn't know him. I thought you knew him. He like stowed away in our friendship and got a job because Trevor thought he was my friend and I thought he was Trevor. He submitted great jokes. Oh, that's the night you met him? Yes. That's wild. <laughs> that's wild. It's hilarious. And apparently the night before he was at the cell, or maybe the night I saw him. What a story. And he gave Louie a, 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 a tag. He just thought, oh, yeah, you just give Louie got off. And he goes, you know what you should say? In a fucking happy, he's like 120 pounds. He's, I'm going to flash a picture of him. He's the funniest fucking guy I've ever met in my life. Oh, shit. Anyhow, never gotten a cold. Doesn't believe in him. Um, maybe that's the secret. Okay. Colds, what's left? Traffic, sweat, the common cold. Oh, that's what it was that I missed. Strong winds. <laughs> traffic sweat the common cold strong winds bugs cats pointy objects and, and filth and i'm always strong in. winds yeah is this in the order in which you've had them or when you come up with a new one you go i should put this on these the list. have been the core for a very long time and got they've it. been in that order for a long time got it strong winds you ever get those strong gusts of winds that i like don't i i went to the i was by the river today and it's windy and I don't like water a lot and it's not a great temperature for me, like around 50. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. Right. Yeah. I don't mean like strong winds, like, you know, natural disasters. I mean, that's terrible, but I just mean like, it's just annoying. And it's like, it's almost like your big brother being like, why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Totally. It's agree. like, you know, it, it blows your shit off. It's fucking yeah. up your hair. It's fucking up your shit. And it, it, it just, you're every in a strong one everyone is a freshman 
<laughs> yes, ex that's great. Everyone, exactly. everyone is a freshman. You have a way with uh, w w with words. Uh, Thank you, my friend. Yes, you have a you have a way. I used to write for TV. I don't like to talk about. It. Gotcha. Yeah, you automatically become. It's humiliating. It's gonna pants. It would pants you if it. Yeah, could. it's it also pushes your clothes up against you. Yeah. Uh, you know, you might drop something and then forget it if you don't want to. I don't litter. Don't bother. But I can't. I don't litter. And I'm I'm chasing a goddamn receipt down three city blocks, you know. And you know what happens when you when you start running, you're gonna sweat. <laughs> yes, exactly right. And you know, it also it just fucks with your you. You don't litter your hair. You really will not stop if it's if it's like if it blows. I'll do the best I very much can, and I do not give up easily. I'm not saying I never let something go, but or or if it's my own thing, if it's your if it's a fucking hat or whatever it is, yeah. that I gotta go, you know. But but yeah, I I chase. I will not litter. I'm with you. I uh, this is people One when I see people throw Mulaney, shit out of their car. Ten years ago, me and Mulaney are just on the street in New York, and he just spits gum out onto the sidewalk. Hurts my and heart. I was like, "What the fuck? Or what the fuck just happened?" Yeah, that was more shocking to me than the fact that he ended up being a cocaine addict. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I was like, "What the?" Fuck? I, swear to God. I was like, "What?" The what the fuck and he was like i don't know and i was like what's gonna someone could step in like yeah what do you do it was like the whole it might be a catholic thing but he's catholic right he is so very it, catholic. it yeah. breaks you know all those black marks all over the is gum is gum yeah which i was shocking i mm -hmm. knew that it i knew that he kind of had a point but the first person that steps on it is not it doesn't become a black mark no it becomes a fucking a ruined night it does. Worse for me is cigarette butts. Oof. I, you never smoked? I did. I would have a place where I held it, or I would literally put it out and go walk to the corner and put it in the garbage. I think my diagnosis of you is you're just a good boy. Thanks so much. <laughs> you're just a good boy. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> um, I'm with you. Strong winds. What's next? Uh, traffic's about the common cold, strong winds, bugs, cats, pointy objects. Bugs? bugs? Yeah. Okay. Mm, yeah. But what What do you, like Certain roaches? Bugs. Mosquitoes? No. Bees? No. Roaches? No. Water bugs? Or uh, those silver, those thousand-like things? The worst. Top of the list. There was one time that- Is no, you don't mind them, or no, you don't like them? No, eradicate. Exterm- Yeah. Yes, exterminate. Final solution. Yeah. There was one time I was sleeping in my basement apartment and did you like living in a basement? I didn't mind it. Okay. Part of me feels like it would be like a little cocoon. It was. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm laying down and I see one of those like thousand leg things like run across the mm -hmm. floor. So I freak out because it's bedtime and those things move, man. They move. Mm -hmm. Is that the one that can also fly somehow? I didn't know that. And if that's true, then we have another problem on our hands. But I do think they might be able to jump. And I did hear that they might bite. What are they called? Silverfish? Thousand leggers? I don't know. Thousand leggers feels a little racist. That's somehow. what <laughs> That's what everyone called them when I, where I grew up. Uh, yeah, I stand by my first time. <laughs> yeah, water bugs. No, water bug is like a, 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 dro a giant fucking roach. I got a story about that too. But so this, this guy, this bug, I saw him. I was like, all right, I got to kill him. You have to move with intent and you have to move yeah, carefully because if he gets away that's it they go as soon as you take a swing if you don't hit this bug odds are you're not going to get him and i did i swung and i missed and he ran and i lost sight of him and i started to look under my dresser under the couch i couldn't see him now you i am your not headlamp on i am not going back yeah my hat with a fan and flaps <laughs> and head i'm not going back to bed now because i'm not going to go to bed knowing he's out there walking around i'm not going to do that he could easily he's walk on up, the streets walk guy. up the couch and yeah. and walk on me yeah so what did i do i, I know you didn't go to sleep you're not gonna this one is i did not go to sleep i moved every single piece of furniture i had into the center of the room and i waited i sat there and waited with the vacuum and then he eventually came out of what a, are you wearing i was probably in pajamas you and wear pajamas i do wear pajamas <laughs> <laughs> I do. I wear pajamas. Good boy. I should have known. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wear pajama pants, men. When I was growing up, I wore the full outfit, man. Yeah, yeah. That and I mean, tough. growing up, I mean like a while, like into Student my boot. 20, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know. Now, and I do have tops still. 
but now I I'm a, you I can't don't buy sweat. just the bottoms. You can, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure, sure. Okay. Look, I haven't been in, I've been out of the game a while. Yeah, even out of the PJ. Um, um, so I I got him, and I went, I went back to where I, was the vacuum? He showed himself. It wasn't quick. It was probably like forty five minutes later, and I saw him and I got him. I sucked Did him up with the vacuum before he came out. Like, he he was he was he he had an like air of, he had an air of arrogance to him, like he he was definitely like trying to show me who was boss he just came right out yeah like oh like all my little that he said <laughs> yeah yeah thank you for finally getting for tuning in yeah. um i had to go back yeah yeah yeah. you're like why who the oma i dreamt up a scenario one time that came true the next morning i was doing a show i was in um where's the alamo san antonio, san antonio. i was in san antonio and, the, and my hotel was on that and river. my heart go ahead yeah and right my hotel was on the river and i checked into this hotel it was like a it had like a New Mexico feel, but it was it was very musty. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I checked in, I was like, it smelled like mildew, like the, you smell yeah. the dampness in those carpets and stuff, even in the lobby. And I was like, this is going to be an issue. I've checked out of, of, of hotels for that reason. I didn't check out. Uh, I went to bed that night and I was so nervous that there was going to be a water bug in the room that I, I, have a, I sleep with a CPAP machine. So I have air. Wouldn't have it any other way. Wouldn't, right. And I wrapped myself like a burrito tight under my legs under my i tucked my entire body in like a like it was a, a sarcophagus is that the right word yeah and uh because i had the, the air i had the air coming in i sweat my balls off but i did it to protect myself from water bugs i dreamt that night because it was on my mind i had a dream that all these bugs came down from the ceiling these roaches like hundreds and they all started to push into each Choreographed? other choreographed now that you mention it possibly yeah they all bunched up together and became one big like super roach and the roach was coming after me i woke up the next day got out of the thing nothing of it so i woke up the next day going about my life i never remember my dreams either and i but i remember that one got up i was like all right i made it you know whatever i go into the bathroom to get ready and shower and stuff and my toiletry bag is on the where the you know the sink Mm -hmm. is like right on there and I go to pick up my toiletry bag. There was like a glass there that they, they clean the glasses and right behind the glass was a fucking water bug that big. I yelped like, like if you stepped on a, like a chihuahua, like I, I, the pitch was so high and I just got my stuff, packed my bag. And I just, we just left. I just didn't even shower. I didn't even do anything, but I either had the foresight. Did I make that? Did I will that? Or was I just clairvoyant? I don't know, but, that we'll big, never know. That big. Scientists are going to be it's like the that Tootsie Pop. for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I realize that I, I sound like a proper lunatic, even in it's just fantastic. So, even so far, just up it's to this, fa- I've it's doomed absolutely myself. Fantastic. Yeah. I couldn't be. Happy. But I am like a laid back guy that's a fun hang, too. I don't. Li- no, of course, but that's part of it. Yeah. It's that's part of your vault. I think I'm a fun hang. Yeah, you are. You're a fun guy to hang out with. <laughs> I'm here. I'm, I'm experiencing yeah, it. Happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have references. So. All right what's the last one cats but cats no go i had a friend who had a cat named sebastian uh a black cat that he was my neighbor and in his basement there was a half wall and the cat was just he was just no good it was the cat was always no good he was up to no good he was just not a good person a good not a good cat and he would attack all the time attack everyone all the time like viciously and every time i would walk in that house how old are you I was in high school. Okay. Every time I walked in the house, the cat was, when you open the door, the half wall of the basement was like, went up right up to the door. The cat was there always trying to fuck you up and uh, always attack me. I think that one was like. The, this is not an episode of Impractical Joke. This is not an episode. No, no, not at all. I think that's the one where I was like, this is the cat that started it all. But ever since then, I don't trust them. When I lived in that basement apartment, it was at the bot- back of a driveway of a house, of a, ta- of a house. And sometimes there'd be stray cats just sitting there. And I would walk. I had to go back to my door. I had to pass the cat. And I just stop and they're like, they don't move, you know, shoo, shoo, they yeah. just kind of look at you. And, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to, I just feel like as soon as I walk past this cat, it's going to fucking attack me. And also the cats have claws and sharp claws, which I don't like the points to. So I, I just don't like cats. I just don't like it. If there was a cat in this room, I'd be unsettled. I have some good news. It's bad news. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have cats? No, I don't have cats. I, cats don't do anything for me. Yeah. I dated a girl who had cats. Oh, you know what's a pretty cool cats are those bald cat, the Mr. Bigglesworth ones. Because yeah. they're like dogs, or they're like just they're like cool. I and don't know. I don't. I wasn't. Uh, familiar I never. With the yeah, I knew a girl who had one, and it was like 
they she's like oh it's like a dog and he really was he just like calm sit friendly wasn't like friendly with an ulterior motive like cats okay. are yeah I don't uh, like this personal space they you know them rubbing cat, here's what bugs me about cats i say that they're they're like private detectives who are afraid of everything whether they're like <laughs> what's this what's this, what's this? Oh, what the fuck? Like, yeah. repeatedly yeah. all day. Yeah. That's their life. They'll come back with a fucking bird in their mouth sometimes. Yeah. You it's like, okay. That's insane. Oh, well that you can't even, like, how are you going to digest? And they can do it. Yeah. Is that the bugs, song? We did the whole song? Bugs, cats, pointy objects, which you know, and filth. Filth is. I cool. mean, come on. What, you're living in maybe the worst city for all of this. I know. You have a smell piss, like you could feel the piss. It's that dense. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's that sucks. That sucks. In the subways, I I really stopped taking the subways in the, in the summer now too. I stopped it. You yeah, you can't. You can't. But there's not traffic down there. But there, that is the magic of it. Yeah, that's the appeal. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, we're stopped for no reason. Ooh. How about those ones where they remember during the blackout where people had to crawl through the, oh, yeah. they had to get off walk, and then go up a ladder. Unreal. Talk about a personal nightmare for you. Yeah, that would be like a living hell. The filth has to do with germs, too. Like I said, like when someone sneezes. Because if I get a common cold, no matter what I do. I love that you always say common. I guess a cold, right? Yeah. yeah. I've never, yeah. If I get a cold, I'm hyper aware of getting, because I have to when tour say, so much. If I you just camera say LeBron, stage. you don't have to say LeBron. I know who you're talking about. Okay. You say a cold. Well, sometimes when I get a common. <laughs> what about that one? When you say common, you don't have to say <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I'm ready at all times. I travel, you know, with emergency and echinacea and elderberry. Do you believe that it works? I don't care if it's, if it, I'm, I roll the dice with it right. and I load have up. Have you it. ever, Zinc. have they come, ever come back seven? Have you ever knocked it out? I did. Now, I don't know if I could attribute it to the earth, to those things or I just like was on the right side of life that day. But most of the time I don't. I take it and I it says take it at the first sign of a cold. And I load up. I'm doing tea. I'm doing liquids. Uh -huh. I'm doing the playbook. Yeah. I still get progressively sicker and I keep with it and I don't come out of it. And usually my commons last six to eight weeks, like at least lingering. I'm telling you, four weeks, 100 percent of the time. But sometimes my colds last more than four weeks, and it's 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 another thing that like preempts my mind. No matter what I'm doing, oh, I have this cold, and it's like I obsess all the, over the cold. I feel like a schnook. I feel like a loser when I get a cold. Yeah, like I should have done. I shouldn't have let this happen. Yeah, and I'm a like a baby when I get a cold a little bit. Oh, like I just like I just can't take it. The sore throat or the not being able to breathe. I'm just like, ah. yeah, fussy, fussy. Yep, I'm with you. That's the list. By the way, we're on the first block. <laughs> um, ADHD. I'm fucked up, man. I'm going to have to take a look at myself. Yeah, ADHD. When? I'm actually going to therapy for that, specifically the ADHD. Med I have separate therapy, therapy about separate therapy about death and the other stuff. Is there an ADHD? There is. Therapist. Yeah. What, and what are you? What and are he they? costs a lot of money. I and no it's one not covered. that. What are you doing in there? Talking. But like. You know, I've been seeing this guy, I would say maybe like, I want to say just under 10 sessions, maybe. By the I got to say, I got to stop. What a nice read on talking. Talking, talking, talking. That was a real nice read on talking. Thank it you. was really evocative. Thank you. Like it was frustrated. It was desperate. It was layered. It, it was. was really good. Thanks. I didn't even notice it. Yeah, no, it was yeah. great. It came from the heart. Yeah, sure yeah. did. Sometimes I can't pull that off if I have to act. Of course can you, you believe can. that? Yeah, if it's, because it's hard. Because everybody's, because yeah. it's hot and. Everybody's <laughs> the pressure's on. I'm acting because I'm usually in traffic when I'm acting. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but I, I, I got to be honest. I told him our last session. I'd really like to make, like I said to him, I posed it to him. I go, can I just ask you, because I have a thing too with like, I never want to put anybody out. I never want to make anyone feel bad. Not that I need anyone's approval or need anyone to like me. No, but I never want to, I always want to go etiquette first. I always want to be mindful, all that stuff. So I have a hard, so I had to have a hard time approaching people when it's a tough thing to talk yeah. about. And I was talking to my my girlfriend and I was like, I, I, I gotta be honest, this guy's so expensive and I, I'm not feeling, you know, he, he prescribed me medication. Okay. So that happened. And then we tried one and now we're switching to another. Okay. But 
that's a hefty bill just to have someone prescribe you medication yeah. and test it out for a month and then switch to another. Yeah. So uh, I was like, that's not what I want from this. I want to, I want to psychologically pull, pull, take these things apart and, and fix it. You know what I mean? Is he an ADHD therapist? Is it just he a specializes psychologist, in, psychiatrist? He who specializes, specializes in ADHD. Yeah. ADHD. I mean, I've never ADHD. heard of therapy for ADHD. I don't know if there's not, but all I hear is they gave me medication. Yeah, I mean, I I was he was referred, uh, and uh, that's his like right. his, his. And specialty. are you doing extra? Like, there's not you're just no, talking. I did do uh, a, 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 e, a, M, e, EMDR e, um, EMDR. Yeah, which I believe you did too, right? Yes. And did you get EMDR from Jamila as well? Yes. Yes. So Jamila turned me on to e, uh, EMDR. Jamila was, Jamil, who was on a game show with you. Yes, I was on a good said, place. Uh, actress and, and yeah. good place. Yeah, we'll great, great gal. She's and, a uh, great friend of both of ours. Yes she told me about it and i went to that because i had some tra some trauma and that actually helped it i really okay, really helped it and i couldn't believe it's I nonsense couldn't that it works it. i couldn't it believe shouldn't, it nothing's dumber than the idea it was of so dumb and it fucking worked and i've been singing i've been telling everyone to do it because yeah. i can't believe i actually saw yes. results yeah. It changed the way I yeah. felt, the way I responded to certain yeah. things. So that was great. So I, I just told him the last time I said, do you see any progress in me when we talk? What timeline should I be on with progress? Do you see any yet? Should I be recognizing it? Is there anything I'm not recognizing? And he's like, well, it's interesting you say that. How do you feel? And I, I said, well, I just feel like we meet kind of inconsistently and because of my schedule and his. I said, so every time I'm, I get going and we're, it ends. And yeah. Then we meet again sometimes three weeks later, the momentum's gone. Yeah. And I, I just can't get any, I can't get any footing here. And he goes, all right. I, he goes, I would agree. He goes, I think that we need to block out a specific time every week. And I was like, but my life doesn't work like that. Yeah. And so within reason, we booked this slot and immediately we booked it. And the, like the first two, two weeks after we booked it, something came up and yeah. I couldn't do it. I mean, maybe the next med will work. Yeah, maybe. What was the last one? So, it was like, Adderall. When did you realize, I think I have ADHD? What You just thought you were like... I I mean, again, you're 40-something? I'm 46. Yeah. It was all just like, he, that's per, our personality. No one mentioned that to me ever. There it, was never... A, like it. I wasn't depressed. You know what yeah. I mean? There was no mental... It was the dark web. Like, you know how you know the dark web exists, yes. but you like got to get an onion... Like, I don't know, dot onion, and like but whatever yeah. the fuck... That's what mental health was until seven years ago. Yeah. This is like, I would say in my thirties is when I started to realize, oh, this is affecting everything I do. Yeah. And a dear friend of mine had it and it's severe and he gave me some books on it and, and told me like the medicine changed his life and all that stuff. And he goes, you won't even realize that whatever you think is normal yeah. is, is not. And when you, un when you start to realize that, oh, that's not what everybody else does, your mind will be blown. I procrastinate. I can't finish something. If I start something, I start something else. In a way, there's a superpower to it because I have eight jobs. Yeah. And I keep my and I keep such bar. a large social social circle and, yeah. and a bar. And I just keep I I keep I keep real relationships with a lot of people. Yeah. I have many jobs. And so there's it's never it's when I wake up. I have a hundred emails, a hundred texts. My days are spent problem solving, solving, switching. This, and I do it. And it's funny because I, I don't realize like sometimes like if I just am jumping from thing to thing because I am so busy and I'm trying to prioritize and manage, or if it's like, holy shit, you can't keep one thing just because you're ADHD. And now you have this type of job and it's like uber insane because it's like, it helps me, but also I, 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 trail right off i'll walk into a room forget why i went in yeah i'll start a sentence and i will literally i'll go Whoa. i have to my phone has my notes app has probably a hundred paid like notes on it yeah and every one of those notes is lists and i have to literally live off of my lists or i cannot function so when i wake up i open my phone first thing i look at the list before i go to bed i prioritize my list for the following day i do high priority end of day this week asap and then that's i shift and change that all day long and it's so many things that if i don't write it down i'll never remember it and it's everything from make a list for neil you know <laughs> on this to yeah. to something like you know like 
my health insurance. It's every single thing to like, I'm working on projects and I, I just, uh, it, it, it got, became scary because my thoughts were, became so fleeting at one point that a lot of times a day I would begin to talk and forget why I started to I forget what I wanted to tell somebody, or I had an idea or a joke or whatever. And that's the worst. And if I don't write the joke down immediately, the, that joke is gone. Well, yeah, I've I lost go, so well, many yeah, jokes. I mean, I don't, I'm better now, but like, yeah. no, I'll, I'll, I won't forget it. I'll forget it. Yeah. Not Especially at even... night sleeping. Yeah. I'm like, I, oh, I'm like, no, nah, I'm like, nah, this one's this unforgettable. <laughs> and I say, this is the key word. <laughs> to remember it and i don't remember i go there's two key words and all i gotta do is remember the key words and then I don't even remember the key words. yeah it's fucking who are we kidding yeah i already like it so adhd uh, i did adderall like i did it i got a uh, someone prescribed me 20 milligram time release about seven years ago uh -huh. i don't like taking prescription drugs and i told them that and they said take it on just the days that you really feel you need it i went home the day finally came i took it it was so stereotypical i was up for probably 40 hours straight sweating i'd never done cocaine gotta yeah. be cocaine that's gotta be it i i was sopping they're wet. both in the same i think they're in the, they're same, the same family, family. Yeah. yeah it's like sopping wet clean deep clean my home got to woke up my girlfriend that I mean, night silverfish beware yeah exactly i was in a new place but god yeah <laughs> There were no silver yeah. fish. Silver fish still talk about the that day. They still talk about the time yeah. that I took that. They were so glad I kicked it. Um, but I even woke her up and I said, my heart is That's beating their out of my chest. I'm just, I'm just saying <laughs> callbacks. Silver fi a silver fish and his father watched from the outside as you, as I, as you as fucking, I literally, as you did it. Yeah. Yes. As I clean their homes away, their little nooks and nests. Yes. My heart was beating in my chest. I woke my girlfriend up in the middle of the night. I said, I, I, might have to go to the hospital i don't i i shouldn't be having this type of reaction I so that's to, the first time the first, first and only ever. time you did adderall St never took the pill again and then up uh, two months ago i told him this and he said well maybe 20 was too high and it shouldn't have been time released and so he started me off with five not time released didn't even i did i forgot i was taking it then he bumped me to 15 i still didn't feel it and he goes that's so peculiar because 15 is the next is 20 and 20 kept you up for 40 hours and you didn't feel the 15. And I was like, no. And he's like, all right. I said, let's try something else. So we're trying. He actually had to pick it up. I forgot. I had to pick it up. I didn't write it down. <laughs> Crying. Yeah. I cry easily and often. Forever? I sound like a lunatic. I realize we need to get a trophy. <laughs> no, don't say that. It's How many eps are you in? It's going to be the crazier than Bert trophy. How many eps are you in? 14. Okay. Thank God you weren't yeah, like Yeah, crazier than Bert. Is Bert crazy? Bert's, well, Bert's, again, no boundaries. Great guess. Sure. Norman, I mean, no, this is, this is, this is, I think, when, when you texted maybe me, crazier than Norman. <laughs> when you texted me what it was, I texted you back. Yeah. Do I, how many do I list? Because I could, you threatened that this might have to be a double episode. Yeah. And I think you're correct. <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen, I'm look, giving you. Well, I'm happy to do it. Okay. Um, look, we'll fig we'll find the ads. Um, okay. We'll find the yeah, better help. Yeah, we will. <laughs> I, uh, I have that one memorized. I could do the better help ad for you. <laughs> and I'm not joking. I'm getting that. I have not no, joked. I'm getting that. I, uh, I cried today. I cried, I cry every day. I cried today. I could. Do you stop yourself? Mm hmm I don't mean like I sit there and weep. No, I know what you yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, in one aspect, it's a personal cry because I'm always just thinking about death and my family. <laughs> we didn't even get there. This episode, the second <laughs> I keep episode. Doing that. And, uh, but in another way, it's like I'm just very... I don't want to be like, I'm an empath, but like, I just, things make me cry and it could be absurd, like something stupid in a movie or whatever like that. But today I, I read an article about, uh, the hunger in Somalia and mm -hmm. the deaths there. And, and it was like, they said, uh, just the most recently, um, I think it was like 60,000 deaths, uh, this past year or up to date and more than half of them were on children under five. Yeah, And I just literally started crying as I read the article all the way through to the end. I, I talked about this to the therapist. I'm like, how do I process that? How do I go on with my day? Like I wake up, I turn on the news in the morning. I'm getting ready. It's like, oh, three children died in a fire in a Bronx apartment. And I don't. Do I don't. you? Okay. So let's say the Bronx fire, right? Yeah. yeah. So what do you picture? I try not to go there. If I go there, like I, if I let myself go, I'll go. Right, all you can the get sidelined into death. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what I do? You're so you're just sad that three children die or thirty thousand Somali it's, kids it's died. It's devastating. 
Yeah. It's so sad. I put myself, what what must their loved ones feel? And what did they endure, those children? Uh, yeah. I can't even think about it now. Yeah. I mean, people, like, we're so consumed here, and it is what it is. We got to keep going. But if you just check in anywhere else over there, it's like, there's just mass casualties everywhere all the time. Well, it's the, also the, the amount pop, it's of a, we're all so desensitized. We go downstairs, we walk a half a block, someone's going to be laying there. I feel bad about that. Crying, shitting them, like something. Mm -hmm. And we just go like, that. Yeah. You don't. You're, by the way, I think you're supposed to. Like, I think our, our nervous system set up that, like, we just got uh, like I can't worry. I can't worry about it. I don't know what to. Yeah. So there's a bit of that in us, right? Yeah. But there's also this thing is just like, I just feel like shit to be to be flippant about it. I know? agree. I yeah. totally agree. And then you get over that. You justify it. Yeah. I mean, the way I'm justifying it right now, it's like, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to fucking and the, and life just moves on no matter what. And I think about that with death too. You could think of mo the most impactful death in your life. And still right now, you get up, brush your teeth, eat a sandwich, you know, go to the park. It, it, we, yeah. it just, it just could, moves on no matter what. And when I go, no matter how many people in my family, my loved ones are impacted by it, at a certain point, they're going to get up, brush their teeth, and go see a movie. It's just weird to think about. I, I go down the rabbit hole with death, personal death, and, and loved ones. But like with stuff like reading something or seeing something i try to keep that at bay if i could yeah and i don't intentionally go down the rabbit hole of death with myself but that's part of the ocd and 88 like ocd and like sometimes i get fixated on it and i can't shake the thought even if i i have techniques that i just employ myself where i'm like i'll like start singing a song and then sing another song and another song and then i'm three or four times removed from that thought and then my adhd sometimes I can't remember what the, the thought was. And so I actually ADHD Fine. myself out Fine. of the sadness. I'll take it. Yeah. As your therapist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like how long is the song? Is it like the no, no, OCD a, song or it's like the. No, no, it's not a like specific a song. It's, it's, it's like, I'll think of it. I'll even, I should say, I think of other thoughts. Right. But then I'll purposely think of multiple thoughts in a row to get lost in it, to not remember. To, so I can't track it. But with the songs, I have a thing called looping. Uh huh. That is the only other big time thing besides the points that really like affects me, where I will get a song or a rhythm or melody in my head, and sometimes, sometimes I can't shake that for months, and I hear it when I wake up. I hear it when I am not focusing on anything else. I hear it when I'm trying to go to bed. I hear it when I'm, and it's just like, and it could be any old song, and sometimes it's songs that have, have triggers for some reason. But then sometimes it's just a fucking song. And at a certain point, like... Triggers like you like the song no, or no, reminds no. you of your friend. Triggers like it brings you back to a, a bad place. Okay. Those are the worst. The ones that are just like, oh, I'm listening to Crush on You by the Jets. Like if that's looping in my head. Yeah. Like that's that was one of my latest loops. And that's been looping right now for, I'll say, at least three months. It's, at least three months. And sometimes it could be a few different songs and I and it'll, it'll just come. I mean, when I wake up, when I wake up and open my eyes, I'm singing the song in my head. I can relate because I sometimes I think when I wake up in the morning and like the tape starts playing mm -hmm. of like negative thoughts or mm -hmm. negative monologue or I'm like, I this doesn't seem right. Mm hmm not like i do anything about it but it's just like right. man i w does everyone think this yeah does ever i'll get a melody from time to time yeah but it won't loop for like as long as yours loop yeah or some are just like a week but like a whole fucking day and those those are even tougher because it's like it's it's almost like I'm torturing myself. Torturing, torturing myself. myself, 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 myself. Alright, we have to just end. That'll be it for this week. Part one of Sal. He promised me we were gonna do it was gonna be a two-parter, and it's gonna be. Wow. I'm that fucked up. Yeah. Yep. <laughs>